I am Caitlin. This is Mitsua. If you can see her down here on the couch, she's given us some snugs. Her social media is right here. Hi, we are the Lady Killers. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. The Lady this Killers. Is... <laughs> this is part two Nixon of our um, Dean Coral uh, two parter. Um, if you have not seen the first part, go watch it now. Yes, link um, up there thing. Yes. That little like info thing. Um, uh, trigger warning. That Huge. one is stressful. This one is gonna be even more stressful. This one will upset you. Yeah, um, this is upsetting. Especially um, sexually abusive trigger warning. Is that what those yeah. words? You get what I'm Mutilation saying. Mutilation is part of this. That's mm -hmm. a pretty bad. Uh, pedio pedophilia. Pedophilia, um, sexual assault again, sexual violence. Yeah. Um, violence in general, it's a murder. Yeah. Um, so this one just specific, oh baby, hi. Hi. This one specifically we get really, um, we're serious in yeah. this. We're serious. very serious. <laughs> but um, Mitsu is here giving us some moral support because we need it. Um, this is, we talk a lot about this in our first part to this, but um, it is a case that is very, very near and dear to our hearts. This is, um, this is our hometown murder basically from Houston. Um, and it was really, really stressful because um, we went on on site to a lot of these places, um, and we got really, really emotionally invested in this. Um, we are recording this for the second time. The first time, our camera just cried on us, um, and it was just we were just very obviously. So flustered. we're back with this, yes, and we can't escape this case. No. Um, it is stressful to be back, to be completely honest. Um, here we go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at these toe beans. I know, do you she's see these so beans? She's being so sweet for the first time in her life. Do you see life. those beans? They're my good God. Beans. Okay. So, um, where we left off, uh, we were talking about Gregory Malley, Winkle, um, and... David Hillegeist. <gasps> David Hillegeist. And um, she just gonna I know we are going to we I would talked about his accomplice, a uh, Dean Coral's accomplice, David Brooks. Oh, Dean Coral, Candyman, Pied Piper, um, the of the Houston area killed 28 boys, as far as we know. Yeah, as far as we know. Um, we talked about his first accomplice, David Brooks, a little bit, but now we are going to be getting into the other um, 24 um, boys that were murdered. Yeah, we only touched on four uh, before. Yes, and mm -hmm. as well as his other accomplice, Wayne Henley. I am so, bad at recapping. Can you recap that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so um, basically the Hillegeist and the Winkles had set up a $1,000 reward. Um, Elmer Wayne Henley was a friend of David Hillegeist um, and had come to the Hillegeist home to ask for um, about his location, like if they knew anything, and also to be like, hey, do you want some, me to put up some posters? Yeah. So basically that's where we are. Right. Um, so at this point, Henley knew nothing of Coral's murder spree. Uh, Henley was a brash teenager who had once been brought up uh, brought up on an assault charge. Um, Henley had known Brooks for a number of years. In 1971, Brooks introduced Henley to Dean, um, Dean Coral. Yeah. Uh, Henley was originally meant to be a victim, but he had such a good <laughs> rapport with Dean oh that God. Dean was honest with him, and Dean really liked him. So... <laughs> He didn't kill him. <laughs> Literally, Henley talks about how he's just so lucky that Dean Coral liked him because yeah. he would have like been. He would have been one of his victims. I should say Henley speaks a lot about this in prison. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. He's word. very open about he's it. He's very open. David Brooks is less so. So Amber Wayne Henley like tells you everything you would ever want to know, and essentially is like, yeah, I think Dean would have killed me if I wasn't just so chill with him. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Originally, Wayne Henley was told. Um, originally, uh, Wayne Henley was told um, that this was a homosexual ring, porn ring in California, which is what David it's, Brooks had been told. Exactly. If you see our first video, is exactly what Dean told um, Brooks, which in itself is bad. It's bad. Yeah, and they're like, um, that's fine. That's fine. They just, yeah, it's fine. Um, Coral promised Henley two hundred dollars for every boy he brought to him. Uh, um, and Henley wanted to be part of something exciting, something beyond routine in the Heights. Um, Henley only found out about the ring after he brought Coral, a boy that Dean later admitted to killing. Mm -hmm. um, we talk, we go into more depth about this again in our first video. Watch that video so you know what we're talking about. But the Heights right now, at this point in time, 2018, very nice gentrified, <laughs> trendy area. Trendy. Yeah. Um, 
a cute area. Like I like. Yeah, I love the yeah, Heights. It's cute. They have like white linen night. It's a, it's a super yeah. super nice place. Yes. Lots of art. Mm -hmm. Very artsy place. Um, at this point, it was a much more um, impoverished. Is that a word? Impoverished. Impoverished. Is a, word. Um, a lot of times, boys would go missing, or yes. they would actually. A lot of times, not just boys. A lot of times, teenagers would run away to go find better life. They hitchhiked um, to California. They hitchhiked to Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. which is closer by. A couple, a couple yeah. hours up. Yeah. Anywho, this was a kind of just like small, slow town. A lot of times kids would want to get out of it and whatnot. So this, though, however messed up it may seem, was very exciting. It was something that, you know, was out of routine for these yeah. for these teen boys. You know, not good that they gave into it, but I'm saying that it was it was some kind of it was some kind of exciting. I'm sure they thought like even like the porn ring, like yeah. what he was saying, like is exciting. Taboo, and you know it's like I'm so interesting, I'm a criminal. Like mm -hmm. and it's for these for um, Henley, who might have been somewhat troubled before, we have some accounts. I don't know that maybe he didn't have a super great relationship with his dad. He did not, yeah. Um, you know, somewhat troubled boy. This was exciting for him. This yeah. was a little bit out of the usual. Um, Henley did not go to the police. Um, in fact, Henley did the opposite. Um, he indulged in it. Uh, he brought Coral, another boy, a friend of his who worked at Long John Silver's with him, um, a boy named Frank Aguirre. They began by playing the handcuff game. Never play the handcuff no, game. No, to see if they could get, who could get out of a pair of handcuffs. Um, when Aguirre put on the handcuffs, Coral dragged the teenager into the bedroom and assaulted him. Um, Aguirre was strangled to death and he was buried in High Island, which we talk about. It's um, off of Bolivar Peninsula, like off of Galveston. And I should clarify what the handcuff game is. <laughs> Essentially, it's, it's so dumb. <laughs> so basically, Dean would be like, oh, Look, I'm like Houdini. I can like get out of these handcuffs, but like the trick is he has the key to the handcuffs the entire time, or he hasn't had them like fully in or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then like Elmer Wayne Henley does it, and he puts them on, and he can get out of them right. because he also has the key. Yeah, it's but like a challenge. So they're like, oh, okay, Frank, why don't you do it? And then Frank does it. Obviously, he doesn't have the key. Now he's stuck. He has no way to get out. To recap a little bit, um, John Wayne Gacy used this a lot. Oh yeah, he a did. Lot. That was his thing. Yeah, his thing. Um, he, he, that was what he was known for. Um, John Wayne Gacy. Um, based he would a lot, strangle and mm -hmm. use the handcuff game. Yeah. Yeah. He based a lot of his mo off of Dean Quarrel. That's why they think John Wayne Gacy had accomplices. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and say. This is really where it gets bad. Um, Henley brought another friend named Mark Scott. According to David Brooks, the pair were trying to tie Mark's hands when Mark fought back. Good boy. Mm -hmm. He grabbed a knife and stabbed at Coral, Good boy. Um, catching his shirt but barely breaking skin. Um, Henley ran to get a pistol while Coral wrestled with Mark. <sighs> Henley pointed the gun at Mark. Mark gave up. Um, <sighs> Sorry, Coral and Henley then strangled him with a cord. Uh, we're gonna start talking about like what he did to these boys. Yeah. And so one more trigger warning in case you haven't stopped please, watching. Your mental health is way more important than this video. Yeah. If you think this could hurt you, please don't watch it. Yeah. Like, and I'm definitely one of those people who like in the middle of the night at Instagram, I end up looking at crime scene pictures and it ends up like messing me up. Um. And I always tell myself to stop, but then I don't stop. This is us telling you to stop. stop. <laughs> Just stop. Don't do if, it. If, if you're like easily triggered by um, gore, by a sexually a sexual assault, anything like that, please horrible just stop. desecration of bodies. Yes. <laughs> insertion of objects. Just don't. Just watch don't do this. it. Go go we watch. We care so much about you. Go watch one of our happier our, videos. Our, we'll put those up our, there. Our cute. Ghost travel video. Go watch that. <laughs> if you ain't feeling even that, you're like, that's too scary for me. Go watch some whitest kids you know. <laughs> Get some vibes. Like, go watch some Olin Rogers, some pure shit. Stop. Just be good <laughs> to you. You deserve it. Okay. Yes. Last trigger warning. We're, ah! we're done. I'm, okay. even, I'm even like stressed out I'm going into stressed this. Out. I don't like <laughs> and this. And we have chosen to talk about this. Okay. I don't like this. Let me just okay. pet Mitsua, get some of her snugs. Okay, we're ready. Okay. We're not. The cycle of rape and murder continued, and the group became a terrifying murder machine. 
Henley and Brooks would lure the boys into Coral's Plymouth GTX muscle car or his white van, which is like, um, like the pedophile van or like a kidnapper van, whatever. It had tinted black windows, pure white van. You know the type. Don't yeah. get in it. Um, and don't get in it. Don't get in Sorry. it. Henley and Brooks um, would then ask boys if they want a ride or a beer, like a smoke. A smoke. Yeah. Some weed. Um, Coral had numerous apartments and rent houses, and he was constantly moving, sometimes staying in one place for only a few weeks at a time. Henley and Brooks would take the boys to one of Coral's many homes. They would then strip the boys naked, tape their mouths, bind their hands and legs, and fasten them with handcuffs to a sheet of plywood. We have a photo of the plywood at the end of it's Coral's like life. Vertical. Yeah, we don't know if this was still the plywood that was being used during this time, but when Coral was found, this was the plywood that was found with him. Um, the boys would then be forced to write letters to their parents, um, sometimes postcards, um, or even they would make their boy the boys call their parents, letting their parents know that they'd be home soon and were safe. Um, for instance, Mally Winkle gave the call to his mother. Many people believe Coral um, forced that call, and that it wasn't of Mally's own volition that he gave that call to his mother. Yeah. Um, we think a lot of this has to do with um, Coral being smart and trying to like perpetuate that these are just runaways and that they left of their own volition so that no one like goes and looks for them. Because if you call or write a letter, no one's going to suspect that you ran away right. from home. Coral, this is the really hard part. This is what he would do to the boys. Coral would pull out the boys' pubic hair, like rip it out. He would then insert a thin glass rod into their penis or stick a large rubber dildo into their rectum. Dean would then have sex with the boys, occasionally making them perform oral sex on him, and then occasionally he'd perform oral sex on them as well. Then once he'd, he was done sexually assaulting the boys, he'd kill them. Um, the next victim was Billy Balch, a 17-year-old who once sold Coral's um, candy door-to-door -door when he worked at the um, candy factory. Um, then Johnny DeLone, who was 16 years old, um, then Billy's younger brother, Michael, who, uh, the Balsh brothers, uh, they were just a couple, <laughs> months, a couple apart. months apart. Um, and Michael was probably on his way to get a haircut um, he when he disappeared. They captured and killed a 20 year old father um, who had been living in the Heights and was on his way back to Baton Rouge um, to get back to his wife and newborn child. What? Just I know, been born. who had just been born. Um, then went Homer Garcia, a boy who was attending a driver's ed class with Henley. I have to burp. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they carted off two more boys who had just moved into the apartment across from Henley's house. Um, Billy oh. Lawrence, 15 years old, was also abducted. Um, okay. This is the hard part this for you. This is the you. hard part for me, um, specifically. I think it's because I have a really good relationship with my dad, and something about it just, like, it breaks my heart. Um, um, he was forced to write a note to his father, um, which at the end, uh, read, Daddy, I hope you know I love you. Your son, Billy. Um, Billy promised to be home in late August, but he never came home. Um, in fact, he... Lived a very gruesome death. Uh, he was kept alive on plywood for three days because Coral really liked him. Also note that um, Coral tended to keep um, boys alive a lot longer um, when he liked them, quote unquote. Um, it wouldn't be so um, gruesome, the torturing wouldn't be, but it would be for a lot longer. Coral didn't like Rusty Branch as much. Um, Coral severed branches. <laughs> Coral severed branches' genitals with a knife and then placed them in a plastic bag, which he buried next to Rusty's body. Coral moved into a small Pasadena home in the summer of 1973, um, which is we drove past. Yeah, um, we yeah we drove past. It's on 2020 Lamar in Pasadena, which is just south of Houston. Yeah. Um, very weird, eerie ghost town. Not run down, but kind of run down. Yeah. Um, no offense to anyone who lives in Pasadena. It is just kind of... It's flat like all of Houston is, but there's not as many trees. Yeah, it feels um, very rural. Yeah. Like, it's in the middle of a city. Yeah, exactly. It's very kind of suburby. 
um, not su- not super trashy, but just very kind of ghosty. It's yeah, it's a, it's a creepy town. It's an eerie place. Yeah. Dean felt bloodlust between June first and August fourth. That is two months. <sighs> um, they killed eight boys, five of them from the Heights, um, and the other ones are in the surrounding area. Still, no one put two and two together. The boys are just going missing. They're just running away. All of them. God, that's eight boys from the area in two months. That's four they're boys like, a month. They're running that's away. That's one a week. <laughs> that's crazy. No, it's even like when we read the names. It's so much. And you so don't many. realize 28 when you read the names. And just that we know of. Just the bodies that have been found. It's Yes. Hi, baby. When you think again. of it in terms of each person, each there week. We like, yes. it's It's horrible. crazy. Um, that summer, so this is kind of the decline, um, things began to wind, wind down to a close and Brooks married his girlfriend, um, after she got pregnant and they moved outside of the Heights. Um, Henley tried to kind of get away, like he tried to enlist in the Navy, um, he tried to put himself, like, distance between him and Coral, there's cat hair going everywhere right now. <laughs> um, he was rejected because of his limited education, um, Henley also felt that if he, like, disconnected himself from Coral, that Coral might grow go after his younger brothers. He even said that like Coral was like kind of attracted to one of his younger oh, brothers. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, you why did you flip fell? like that? Oh you um, goof. Henley's really outspoken and we have a lot of information from him. Who knows if it's true, but yeah. like we have a lot of he talks about this quite a bit and a lot of his motivation. So a lot of this comes directly from Henley's mouth. Yes. Um and yeah, so he definitely the idea that we get from him is that he is not like a sociopath or a psychopath and neither really well it's hard to say with david brooks but with henley you get a sense he did care about people brooks you get a sense cares about people he at least cared about dean yeah and like it's one of those things where they have this emotional connection to someone and this kind of empathy but there's something deeply wrong with them and the fact that they can be part of these crimes so it's yeah Interesting. Anyway, final scene. Mm -hmm. On August 8th, Henley arrived at Coral's with his buddy Tim Curley and his girlfriend Rhonda Williams. To clarify, um, Rhonda Williams is dating Henley, not Tim Curley. Right. That was a weird sentence. (laughs) Um, um, No one was supposed to be attacked that night. Uh, Tim Curley was not brought to be a sacrifice or like whatever. And after everyone passed out, after having tons and tons of fun, Coral hogtied all three of them, including Elmer Wayne Henley and gagged Curly and Williams. He kicked Williams over and over in the ribs and then yelled at Henley for bringing a girl into the home. Only after Henley promised to murder Williams did Coral untie him. So basically it's a negotiation. He's like, I'm on your side, buddy. Like, trust me. Yeah. And then Coral carried his 22 caliber pistol and Henley had a knife with an 18 inch blade. My- Coral tied both victims to the torture board. <laughs> I, I hate the fact I laughed at that, so, but it was I'm the so cat. Sorry. It, it was the, the cat. cat. I think um, you can see her in the frame. She was being so sweet and cuddly, and then was all of a sudden like, I gotta go. <laughs> she was like, I'm, I'm doing She's cat like, gotta go. Now. Coral tied both victims to the torture board and began to sexually assault Curly. Curly, to this day, says that he suffers PTSD from this event. So does Rhonda. Uh, but Rhonda's much more outspoken about the event than Tim. Um, Henley then grabbed Coral's gun while he was sexually assaulting Curly. He aimed it at Dean, um, and then Henley announced, I can't go on any longer. I can't have you kill all my friends, which is ironic because he let him kill many of his friends, but it's fine. And in that moment, Elmer Wade and Henley shot Dean Coral. Williams holds that Henley proved in that moment that he was not all evil, that there was still some good in him and the good won. Wayne killed the devil, recalls Williams. Henley was interrogated surrounding his involvement with Coral. Uh, Henley panicked and let slip that Coral had once bragged about killing boys and burying them in a storage shed. The police immediately began digging at the storage shed. Oh, I burped. And found their first body in a matter of minutes. Um, There's a recording of Henley crying to his mother in a radio phone saying, Mama, Mama, I killed Dean. Hello? Mama. Who's this? It's Wayne. Yes, this is Mama, baby. Mama? I killed Dean. Brian? Ma'am? What are you doing? Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, God. Where are you? Um, it's all right. Brian? It's all right. It's all right. Where are you? I'm, I'm out of his warehouse. Where? Out of that warehouse, he keeps. <laughs> Can 
back him out there? Yeah, yes. Is that where I'm Clark? She can't, no, you can't come. I'm, I'm with the police, mama. It's really important to note that his mother thinks that killing Dean means he's just killed his best friend and he's probably going to go to jail. Yeah. And then in this other sense, the police in surrounding area don't know that he's involved yet. So they think he's like a folk hero, mm -hmm. which he's like building up upon. Yeah. Like he yeah. wants them to think that about him. Mm -hmm. It's not until the next day when Henley admitted his involvement to the Pasadena police. Um, David Brooks, which is like my favorite part of this, was escorted to the Houston Police Department by his father. This is the one good thing about this story. This is Alton, <laughs> Alton, um, who was escorted to the HPD by Alton, who told the detectives that his son had something he needed to tell them, which is such a dad thing. I love it, I love it. And Henley and Brooks then showed the police all the burial sites. Um, Elmer Wayne Henley and David Brooks were uh, try blah, 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 tried separately um, for their roles in the murders. Um, Henley was brought to trial in San Antonio on July 1st, 1974, and charged with six murders uh, between March 1972 and July 1973. Uh, the jury deliberated for 92 minutes, less than two hours. So um, short for six so short. charges. The jury deliberated for 92 minutes before finding Henley guilty for all six murders, uh, which is so short. That's Such a very short, short. time. Um, he was sentenced to six consecutive 99-year terms. Meaning he's never getting yes, out. Yes, totaling 594 years. Yes. Um, Henley appealed his conviction, his conviction to no avail, um, claiming the jury had not been sequestered. Um, Henley was once again a, a sentenced to six 99-year terms on <laughs> June 27, 1979. So it's, it's like he literally he appeals it just to get the exact same sentence. Yes. <laughs> Um, Brooks was brought to trial on February uh, 27th, 1975. Brooks had been indicted for four murders. I know four. I did this. Four murders, um, which is a couple less than Henley. Yes. Um, though Brooks had been in it longer. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It does go to show, I think, a little bit that Henley was a lot more open about everything. Yeah. Um, which might show guilt. Yeah. Um, so, for all four murders committed between December 1970 and 19, uh, June 1973, um, he was brought to trial charged only with the June 1973 murder of 15-year-old William Ray Lawrence. He, was, he's, he is only charged for one murder. Yes. Um, Brooks claimed to not have been actively involved in the killings. Um, ADA Tom Dunn dismissed the defense's claim completely, outright telling the, journey, uh, the jury... Um, the defendant was in on this killing, this murderous rampage from the very beginning. Um, he tells you he was a cheerleader, if nothing else. Um, that's what he was telling you about his presence. You know he was in on it. And it's like, yeah. At Even best, he's he, a cheerleader, yeah. which means he allowed it to happen, yeah. which is like committing the crime. Exactly, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brooks' yeah, trial true. lasted less than one week. The entire <laughs> trial lasted that's wild. less than one week. The jury deliberated for 90 minutes, two minutes less than him leaving. They were like, um... So short, um, before they reached a verdict. He was sentenced to life imprisonment on uh, March 4th, 1975. He showed no emotion as he was being sentenced, though his wife did bust into tears. Um, Brooks also appealed his sentence. Oh my god, which is, I'm oh, sorry, I'm so laughing. funny, it's though? It so is, funny. though. Well, it's... Because you're like, bro. I know, like, dude. Um, contending that the signed confessions used against him were taken without being formed of his legal rights. His appeal was dismissed in 1979. It is just really funny to me that they're just, like, trying to grasp at something to shorten their life sentences. Or they're just, like, a little... Six consecutive... Six consecutive... 99-year uh, sentences. 500 it's just, like, years. And it's funny that they, they you oh know... Um, they appeal their sentences just to get the exact same sentence. Yeah. It's funny to me. No, it's ridiculous. Um, both are currently serving life sentences. Henley <laughs> is incarcerated. Henley is incarcerated in the Mark, Mark W. Michael, Michael unit in Anderson County, Texas. Um, Brooks is incarcerated in the Ramsey unit near uh, Rosharon, Texas. I have no idea where this Rosharon, place is. Rosharon. Rosharon. Texas is huge. Um, we don't know. So, yeah. The last thing we want to talk to you guys about is the remaining boy who has been unidentified. Um, his photo, what we think is his photo, is right here, but there's... If it isn't... It's another victim. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
And something we would like to say is present you with the three options for his name, his surname. Um, it could be, <laughs> you're good. It could be Harmon, Harmon, or French, Harmon with an O, Harmon with an A in French. Um, so if you recognize this boy, if you recognize those names, then please, please, please report to the proper authorities and give justice to these families. Um, if you know anything about this case, it's not over. And it's still going. It's yeah. still going. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Sharon Derrick is a forensic anthropologist currently working on this case. Um, her work has brought so much information about these boys to light and is incredibly admirable. She is still identifying bodies. Um, and we would like to thank her for her continued contribution to this case. And we would also really like you to urge, we would like to urge you to do your part. Um, mm -hmm. If you have legitimate information, if you don't, then don't, don't send give in it. any false information. If you like, do, legit information. we hate you. Um, <laughs> You're like, no doubt about it. Like, yes, offense, we, we, we stop. We hate uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But to end on yeah. a brighter note, maybe it's like, I think this is why true crime is powerful. We're not doing this to bring glory to serial killers. We're doing this to bring some hope to victims and victims' families. And I think Michelle McNamara's and, recent success yeah. with the Golden State Killer proves yeah. that um, true crime can do a lot to like just even get support out. Because yeah. obviously, I, I really want to support like Paul Holes and his team that actually brought D'Angelo to justice. Yeah, allegedly the Golden State Killer. Um, Definitely is um, hundred percent match, <laughs> but just to but be official, allegedly. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like true crime is a powerful tool to get information out there in an entertaining way, and we do hope we're entertaining. But it's one of those things where it's palatable, but it also informs you um, about cases that are still out there yeah. and things that aren't done. Um, but also on the cases that are done, I think it just reminds you. That there are, it's not, they're not everywhere. We're not fear mongers, but there are monsters out there. And yeah. Just be, be aware, be self-aware, um, not just self-aware, but I mean, these are, these are boys who had families, who had friends, who had lives. Um, and the same goes for any killer, any serial killer, anything like these are people. It's not sexy. No, I, <laughs> I'll get to that. It's um, not sexy. These are kids that. And people who ha have lives, have loved ones, um, and they're very, very real, very real stories. And it's easy to disassociate from them and just tell them as stories. Uh, and I know in our case, definitely, like, we're interested in the psychology and the story yeah. behind it. No. Uh, like, we can admit Murders that. are interesting, yeah. but God, it's not the point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's not the point that I think we want to make it all of our videos. We're interested in the psychology because we want to be able to stop them. Yeah. Like, it's not because we're like, wow, they're so sexy and so That's interesting. That's so interesting. Like, oh my God, no. Because let me tell you, have I learned this the hard way? Um, <laughs> scrolling through the true crime tag on on Instagram... Um, there are people, and um, yes, offense. We're not <laughs> part of We're you. not part of you. Um, and people who I said that so aggressively, <laughs> but actually, I'm like, it's like fight me. I feel like I feel like we are two people who really try to be. <laughs> non-judgmental and yeah. inclusive about people but this is one thing i'm like we're being judgmental I'm we like, you. <laughs> no kink shame but liking murderers isn't a no, kink you go like, yeah people sexualize murderers serial killers ted bundy uh, is the biggest gross. one and then also like school shooters which is uh, it's so disgusting to me and i text her every couple of days i'm finding new accounts it's so no, gross it's like literally gross. just like we just had a school shooting in our area San in santa fe texas and the thing is, like, those kids will never graduate high school. Yeah. And it's not cute. It's not fun. They aren't the bullied people. Like, the people that shoot up a school are not no. the people that are bullied. They're Definitely not no. the people that are attacked. They are the bullies. Even they if they, the even if, say, they were bullied, <laughs> that doesn't give you a right to go kill someone people. into a locker. Literally even just sending them, like, Threats on Facebook, it's horrible. I'm not minimizing bullying. No. But when you bring an assault rifle to a high school, yeah, you have taken it to a different level where you are suddenly the worst bully that could have been there. Yeah. You're not better, no you're matter, worse. No matter what someone has done to you, what anyone has done to you, it doesn't give you the right to kill other people. It's not sexy. You're no. not vigilante. You're not a hero. Yeah, it's not cute. Um, and that's not what we're doing. We're not we're not fantasizing. We're not putting any of these clothes on pedestals. Like we are very much um, what 
we want to do. And I feel like to us, it goes without saying, but uh, maybe other people don't realize. The community's mixed. Yeah. And I think we want to make sure where we stand in this as, community. As we are just starting this channel, you know, just starting. We're new. We're new. Uh, we want to get right off the bat. We are only trying to raise awareness uh, to the families, to the victims. Also, awareness for people that stuff like this happens. And... Oh. Take care of yourself and take care of others. You know, if you see someone in a weird situation, say something. Be the Henley who was at the end of the story, but be it be there at the beginning. Be there the murder. <laughs> yes. Like, don't murder people. Just yeah. stop it yeah. already. Be yeah. a bystander that intervenes. Yeah, don't get into the bystander effect. Love, get kitties, adopt, yes, not shop. Oh, she gonna, she gonna freak. Oh, 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 come here. Adopt, don't shop. Adopt, don't shop. Can I, can I say that louder? That has nothing to do with anything, but adopt, don't shop. Love, just love. Okay. So okay. like, subscribe, rate, leave bell, a comment. Bell, no, no, bell notification. Um, leave a comment with something good in your day. Um, follow us on Instagram if you want to see all of the, um, Instagram stories I post of snuggling Mitsuo while I'm editing videos. I love to do that because she's a good snuggler whenever I'm like editing and when we're working. We love you guys so much. Love Have you. a safe, safe day. I hope this didn't traumatize you as much as it traumatized us. Mm. Mitsuo was like, all right, gotta go. Gotta plan. Gotta bust. Okay, she bust. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>